Eddie Radosovich, George Stoya here from Lawrence, Kansas, Oklahoma Falls, 38-33 today in what was a, uh, let's just put it out there, it was a shit day, George. Uh, Oklahoma struggled offensively, they had a, a weather delay in between, you fall into a 14-0 hole with a pick six and then Kansas driving right down the field. I mean, where do you even want to start? Where can you start on a day that was uh, so inept? Look, Oklahoma had several opportunities to win this football game. Um, to be brutally honest, they just sucked. In the moments that they needed uh, to win the game, especially on offense, it just didn't happen. They were really bad on third down today. Um, look, they, they weren't able to move the ball when they needed to. Dylan Gabriel only threw the ball 19 times, which was kind of head scratching. I know the weather was a factor, but then it wasn't a factor towards the end. Uh, they, they actually ran the ball well at times. Then Tawi Walker gets banged up. All of a sudden, they can't run the football. Looked like Ethan Downs was going to save the game, and OU was going to escape with a win, uh, and OU goes backwards, has to punt, Kansas goes right down the field. Uh, it just, honestly, Eddie, it just was a weird day from the start. You talk about the weather. You mentioned the pick six. Uh, that's when you knew, okay, OU's probably in for a hell of a game today. I honestly thought they came out, they played really well after the delay. They go up 21-14. Uh, Kansas scores a field goal right before the half. Uh, and then coming out of halftime, that's where the game, to me, Eddie, switched. They came out, OU had three straight possessions. They went punt, punt, fumble, uh, and, and Kansas went and, and scored and I think went up, and that's kind of when it started to fall apart, and then it was just a back and forth. But uh, just a really, really honestly shitty performance, Eddie. Yeah, it was really bad. And, you know, I, I think that the, the frustrating thing as Oklahoma heads back to Norman now with Bedlam on the horizon, it's going to be kind of the fact that as poorly as things went today, you had multiple opportunities to not only extend, like uh, like they had the chance in the 21-14 in the first half, uh, you had the opportunities in the second half, it seems, uh, but they just weren't able to uh, get over the hump today. And I think that it kind of, uh, you, you got to make sure that you don't have this thing tailspin on you. Uh, let's, let's go into some individual stuff here, uh, or not individual stuff, but just stuff that uh, we can point out just in terms of there was some positive today. I mean, the defense gave you a chance time and time again, but when you needed a stop at the very end of the game, it was something Brent Venables talked about after the game was uh, he should have called a timeout before the fourth and six. Yeah, Brent really fell on the sword in the post-game press conference saying the fourth and six there. I think there was just a little over a minute remaining, uh, and Brent decided not to call a timeout. They end up picking up the first down all the way down to the 10-yard line. Uh, and kind of what looked like kind of a busted play. Dolby was there, but um, yeah, and, and look, I get it. Brent's going to fall on the sword, right? Like he's the head coach and he's going to say, hey, I messed up on that one play. That one play is not why Oklahoma lost the football no. game on Saturday. It was because the offense's ineptitude to be able to move the football. Uh, and honestly, Jeff Lebby's play calling wasn't good enough today. I, you, you think back to several key plays. I think back to the third down and three right out of the half. They run a sweep toss to Gavin Freeman. That's good stuff. They have to punt at midfield. The next possession, I think they ran a QB draw on third and six. That gets stuff they have to punt. Then on the next one, you're running the ball really well with Tawi Walker, right? They don't even have Tawi in the game. They hand it off to Jill Farouk. He fumbles. Kansas takes over and goes and scores a touchdown to retake the lead. That's the key sequence to me, Eddie, where this thing really fell apart. And sure, the defense gave up some plays. You, you lose Danny Stutzman, who who knows how long he's going to be out. That could be a huge loss. But the defense came up with stops time and again towards the end of the game to win it, just not on that one fourth and six. And, and again, offense gets one first down after the Ethan Downs touchdown. The game's over, man. And, and that's the part that I think Oklahoma fans have to be most frustrated. As bad as they played, they had a chance to win it there at the very end. I know that we talked a lot about competitive depth uh, throughout the you know preseason, throughout you know at times throughout the season, and it's been a positive for them. At times, are they running too many guys out there offensively? Yeah. I mean, it just seems like the the offensive line. You you played like eight or nine guys today. Uh, it seems like they could never find any type of rhythm. We talked to Andrew Rame after the game. You know, he's not going to necessarily say that they need to stick to five, but I think that it, it just doesn't seem like there's any continuity up there. There's not, and, and when you talk about an offensive line, you want to have some cohesion. You want to have the same five guys playing together, uh, and today you kept seeing them rotate that left side where it was, you know, at the start of the game, I think it was Bird and Rouse, then 
Caden Green comes in, who I and it's baffling to me that Caden Green didn't start the game today. The way the kid has played the last few weeks, the way they've been able to run the ball with him in there made no sense. Then Jacob Sexton comes in for Walter Rouse, who I think is a little banged up. All of a sudden, they're able to move the ball in the in the, in the first half. Who comes out in the second half? It's Bird and Rouse, and, I'm, and they all of a sudden they go three straight possessions where they can't move the ball. I think every scoring possession today, Eddie, I believe Caden Green and uh, Jacob Sexton were in on the offensive line. So it makes no sense to me what the rotating was doing there. Even the rotating at running back. Tawi Walker is your best running back. How he's not in the game, all, and I know you can't run the guy all the time, but I, it's, it's crazy to me that they're handing the ball off to Jalil Farouk. It makes no sense. Or running these sweeps with Gavin Freeman. You're killing him up the gut. It just, I don't know, man. It was, it was really odd from an offensive standpoint today. Even on defense, they did some rotating that I thought was a bit head scratching. Look, Jaron Kanick wasn't good enough today, missed a lot of tackles. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing at linebacker moving forward. I thought Kobe McKenzie played well. Reggie Pearson gets ejected from the game at safety. Peyton Bowen needs to be on the field more, in my opinion. I, I just, there's a lot of that going on, Eddie, where the rotations don't make a ton of sense to me. What did you think of the uh, Reggie Pearson play that ended up with uh, a resulted in his ejection from the game? The flag wasn't thrown during the uh, the play. That could be a fourth down coming up. Now they're on what probably the one yard line, line, half yeah. yard line. Uh, you know, asking them to get another stop, you never know. But at the same time, it might maybe makes Kansas have to make a decision there. I, I'm sure that they were going to go yeah. for it. Uh, just your thoughts, because I haven't seen the play. I was down on the field. I mean, he definitely hit him with his shoulder. Um, I, I think Reggie's in a tough spot, man. Like, well, I don't know what else he's supposed to do there, but by rule, uh, you know, I, I would assume that is targeting. I, I don't really know. We asked the officials after the game and you know they just told us what the rule was and that he led with his shoulder so i don't know the call that i thought was honestly they missed was the uh pass on down the sideline where the player was clearly out of bounds i guess the rule is something about if it's tipped he can reestablish himself but he still didn't reestablish i don't know the officiating was i thought bad both ways I, there was a couple calls on kansas today too that i was like that's just a bad call uh so the officiating wasn't great and uh the other one too the 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 sideline uh, penalty that yeah. I thought was on Brent. Brent said after the game is another I, coach barking. I don't think it was. Uh, I think all you can do right now is kind of speculate about who it was. Uh, I, I know that, and you'll probably see the video right here. I I think it might have been an offensive coach. I don't want to single anybody out and just be completely wrong, but uh, there are some fiery guys on that side of the football that, uh, you know, probably wanted their voice to be heard. Yeah. Uh, but you can't give up 30 yards and penalties. And that was one of the bigger things today, I thought, was uh, you know, outside of the three turnovers, which why are they having Marcus Stripling field a, a kickoff? I, I that know. had to be something that Kansas scouted, though, and said, hey, there's a defensive end out there. And, and look, uh, it ended up canceling out because Kansas sure. misses the field goal there. And, and also Oklahoma had one, too. They got one off Kansas. Sure. So, you know, it, look, shit happens. Uh, that's college football. But it just felt... Eddie, just sloppy in every way, whether it was, you know, the kickoff return or the defense giving up chunk plays or the offense not being able to move the ball. Even the punt unit was not good today. You had guys running on and off the field. How about the timeout, the mismanagement, the timeout? Just take the delay of game there. They could have used the timeout there at the end of the game. Ele Eleven or it was like two or three minutes into – uh, the, the second half and you're burning a timeout because you don't have the right basically the right personnel out there. I, it just I don't know man it, look and, and there's part of me that's like a lot of this is fixable yeah. right a lot of this uh, stuff that Oklahoma did poorly today is fixable I still think this offense can be a good offense it just needs to simplify it, in my opinion like if, if things are working one way stick to it like I feel like they, they sometimes get too cute uh, you talk about game management. That stuff's fixable. Like you got to know who's supposed to be on the field on punt and punt return and and things like that. The defense, I, I still think, um, you know, is, is pretty good. They buckled down in a lot of really good spots today that they had to. They came up with big Ethan Downs. Ethan Downs got absolutely robbed of a spectacular play today uh, that should have won Oklahoma the football game. It was right there for the taking, and you just can't do those things. This is college football, right? You can't make that many mistakes two weeks in a row and expect sure. to win. And, and that's what we talked about all week. And I really thought Oklahoma was going to bounce back this week. I thought that they uh, were going to have a better performance and, and really, you know, and they came out again, the defense came out, gets the turnover downs on the first possession. And then Dylan Gabriel throws the pick six. And it was just like off the rails from there. It felt like too many turnovers, too many penalties. 
too many, uh, you know, poor play calls, whether you want to blame the offensive coordinator or whoever. Uh, you know, I, I think that it added up for Oklahoma today. And in the end, Kansas wins 38-33. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to Soonerscoop.com's YouTube page. We'll be back on Monday as it's Bedlam week. I mean, I, I, let's, let's kind of close there. How do they bounce back? I mean, I, it feels like just talking to some of the players after the game, uh, it was a pretty big gut punch today. To, uh, to be heading back to Norman into Bedlam week, which, you know, I think everybody within the state lines is going to know how important that is to a lot of people. Uh, how, do, how do they bounce back from this? Uh, you know, it, we're going to find out what this team's made of, what the, what the mental part of this team's made of, because th- it felt very somber post-game. I mean, it, Dylan Gabriel was very short. I mean, Andrew Rame's quote to me goes, it's hard to explain what just happened. I think tell, kind of tells the story of the day, especially on the offensive side. So, I, honestly, I don't know, Eddie. Uh, you know, they have to just realize there's still everything to play for. And I know that's tough to say right now because they just played like shit <laughs> and nobody wants to hear that. But it's true. If yeah. they can go win out, they're still playing in the Big 12 championship game. They sure. control their own destiny in that aspect. College football playoff, we're not even going to mention that right now because it's that, that a lot of things have to happen. But... In terms of playing for a Big 12 championship, which is a, which is a big goal for this team, that's still on the table, and you know Oklahoma State's going to come into that game next week, uh, licking their chops. We'll see what happens tonight in Stillwater with Cincinnati, but I expect Oklahoma State to win that game. And uh, look, man, it's 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 uh, it's balls to the wall next week, and and you're going to find out if this team is really mentally tough because uh, they've they've got a lot to improve and a lot to prove uh, if they want to accomplish what they want to this year. Oklahoma loses 38. I was I almost fumbled the mic there. Yep. That would have been a, a my bad. Uh, 38-33 is your final score from Lawrence. They bring down the goalpost. A good night for uh, Lance Leipold as he gets it done, even without Jalen Daniels. That's a good football team. That's a, that should be said. I have some people in my mentions. You can't lose to Kansas. That is a good Kansas football team. That's no, that, as good. I mean, that's that's something that people they look at the name Kansas and they think, yeah. oh, they should be terrible. You haven't been paying attention to college football. I think that that's why we talked about it on the unofficial forty. We talked about it on the on the on the Tuesday show. We talked about it on the Thursday opponent preview. That you know you can't just walk in here anymore and beat a Kansas no. team that has a little something, yeah. and especially offensively. So. It was a uh, it was a trying day. I need to go upstairs and try to dry out because it was a complete shit show down on the field, uh, just on the actual field and then off the field for me uh, doing video. But uh, yeah, it's a rough one for Oklahoma. They fall to seven and one on the season, and Bedlam's coming up next week. So we will uh, be back with uh, Kerry Murdoch this evening for the Eskridge Lexus post game show. Excited to get his thoughts, and then uh, be back at it on Monday as uh, Brent Venables and you know everybody else is going to have to get back to the practice field. You've got to be able to figure this shit out, or <laughs> you're going to be looking at two losses in a row, and you think it's bad now, just wait. For George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosovich from Lawrence, Kansas.